Welcome everyone to the Locked Up RC channel. I am your host, Patrick Norton. Tonight, we have what should be a fairly simple procedure. We are going to install some SCX-102 axles in our original SCX-10. Stick around. So, if you've seen the show before, hey, welcome, Matthew. If you've seen the show before, let's see. First, I'll get this out of the way. You know, something's going to go wrong at some point because I took the week off last week. Anybody, feel free to let me know if the sound or image quality is garbage. I'll do what I can. So, also, it is definitely cedar season here in Austin because my throat, my sinuses, everything is jacked up. So if you see me drinking chloroseptic, I will just, I'll apologize in advance. But anyway, my seat's all crooked. So we have this Unimog SCX-10. Um, this was, we, we've brought this up on the show before. I think last time Eric was here. Uh, welcome Robert. Welcome Trevor. Welcome Red. Uh, if you've seen the show before, You've, you've probably seen this. Uh, we haven't done a whole lot of work to it other than just kind of gawked at its fantasticness. It's a little dirty. What, what a surprise. Something here is dirty? That's never happened before. <clears throat> if you know anything about SCX-10s or SCX-10-2s, welcome, Eric. And if you're watching this show, I assume that you know something. Uh, you know that you... Uh, you can bolt these into an SCX-10 if you use a four link. However, we have something better in mind. So for those of you that don't know, we make a CMS kit. We call it the Pro CMS kit, but it's not reserved for professionals, you know. So what we're going to do tonight is hopefully we're gonna be able to go through this pretty quickly. We've, we've done these before on, on the show. Uh, but last time we were taking an SCX-10-2 and putting VP axles in it. This is basically just going to be a similar process, but instead we're going to be putting SCX-10-2 axles into an SCX-10. Man, acronyms. Woohoo! See, I can't, I can't be doing that. That's going to hurt. I'm going to drink so much water. I need it. I know what I need. For Christmas next year, someone send me a little hamster bottle and I can just sit over here and go like, I hope that sound came through. Looks like it probably is. It's a lovely sound. That way I can just drink and still be doing stuff with my hands. Because I know, you know, you guys aren't looking up here. No one's looking at this. No, everyone's looking down there. Ooh, it's all reversed. Oh, two cameras are so fun. Anyway, so first things first, uh, I will mention that I have a box of... Uh, of parts, I do this with a lot of the, the trucks. I don't know if I've mentioned these before. These little Sterilite seven quart containers. Uh, this is not a paid advertisement by Sterilite, I wish. Uh, but these little containers, I find they're really helpful. They're stackable, <clears throat> right? So I find these to be quite helpful when I have multiple projects going on at the same time because I can take, I mean, axles will fit in here. Wheels, tires usually will fit in here. Uh, maybe not all of it at the same time, but um, it's it's good for things like this where I've got, you know, all these trucks that you see behind me. These are all, ooh, I, I did that just like a weatherman. I feel like I need a green screen. The front is forming over here. Anyway, <clears throat> I think because I didn't sh do the show last week, I'm probably going to be extra ridiculous tonight. It just, it builds up in me. I can't help it. Maybe I could, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so these containers are really helpful. Uh, if you're trying to do storage in your workshop or your office or whatever, like I said, they're stackable, they're clear, so you can see what's in there. They're, they're nice. So where are we? So I've got a whole bunch of parts in here. Some things are gonna come back out. This was actually the parts bin for our SCX-10-2. So some of the things that are in here have nothing to do with what's gonna go in this truck, but these axles were in there because we pulled these off of the 10-2. And I had this Unimog sitting there with these OG axles and well, they just don't really look realistic. So I figured, hey, you know what? I can do something 
with those axles, I can put them on here and up the game on this thing. And I think we, let's see, we also installed SSD axles on an original SDX10, but this is gonna be the first time that we've put 10.2 axles on an SDX10. See, and I thought I was done with acronyms. I guess you never are. Anyway, what's everybody else up to tonight? Camelback, yeah, I guess but then I have like a thing over and you gotta pinch it and everything, I don't know. I think I feel like the hamster thing would also be the most ridiculous thing I could do on a live stream show would be to have a guy sitting here pretending to be quasi professional and then just kind of reach over and go, I, I can't imagine a whole lot more st stupidity than that. And that's, that's what I'm here for is to entertain and be stupid. It looks like Eric put some, <clears throat> Whew, some scale hardware on here, but actually, you know what? Let's see. So I'm going to be pulling some of that off. I mean, I'm going to reuse it, but you know, I'll be having to go back and forth between, I guess, scale hardware and standard hardware. I'm not sure how much scale hardware. Actually, it looks like he's got it all over the place. So maybe I won't have to go back and forth. I'm going to, I am now going to do my best to keep all of my parts in order so that I can reuse what I can. Reuse what I can. Yeah, fair enough. Building my Jeep YJ. Hey, Jeremy, a real Jeep YJ or a scale Jeep YJ? Because I like both. I've had both. Actually, I take that back. I've never had a YJ truck. Uh, truck, a YJ. See, man, cold medicine. I've never had an RC YJ. I just had, what was mine? I think mine was a, a 94, 93, 92, somewhere in there. God, it's been so long. Is that terrible? Wait, actually I don't. So we're not actually gonna be reusing the track bar. So I don't even have to loosen that. I am gonna reuse these servo mounts. <clears throat> so what was in here before was a Hand Brothers off-road CMS kit originally intended for the Axial SCX-10. And if you're wondering why I'm removing it and I'm not just trying to slap in the front axle, there there is a reason. And I will loosen some stuff here and then I will show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Woo! Ow. It hurts. Pain. Fighting through pain. So... You know what, maybe I, I am going to actually loosen that just so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. It's really in there. I think you used some Loctite somewhere. Scale, fair enough. Also good. <clears throat> so this is the drop bracket that gets used in conjunction with our Pro CMS servo plate. I'm not going to bust that out just yet because you'll you'll see what's going on but basically the way these things work on the frame is this bracket tucks up into the frame and this is the hand brothers kit and this goes into the frame i'm just going to drop some stuff don't worry about me and essentially i don't know if that's lighting up it's not lighting up very well if it is lighting up um I'm trying to get those holes to illuminate together at the same time and have it so you guys can see it. Long story short, if you try to use this Hand Brothers servo plate, your track bar is not going to match length to your drag link for an SCX-10-2 axle. And that's just going to result <clears throat> in floating endpoints as your suspension articulates. And floating endpoints kill servos. I should get a t-shirt that says that. <clears throat> I'm sure that would be a big seller. Um, let's see. It looks like I'm going to try. I don't know if that's going to work out. <clears throat> but for the sake of being somewhat lazy, I'm going to do my best to reuse all of the links that are already on here. And these are, I don't remember what these are. Eric, what are these? I know you're in here somewhere. Fess up. You should have come over and helped me with this. Damn you. 
<clears throat> um, I'm going to try to reuse the linkage where possible. That's not to say that we will not replace it at some point down the road, but for the sake of this conversion, I try to do things so that you guys can see how this would go if you were doing it yourself at home. I feel like that's a reasonable way to go about things. We've got comments. I'm going to have to scroll down. Yeah. every It is strange when things are backwards on camera. I don't know. But I guess it's just how it has to be. Get another one? Oh, no. Why is this? Oh, it's taking forever. <laughs> it's like 10 seconds. It took forever. I'm not impatient. Yes. <clears throat> I am excited to see how this, you know, changes the look of this truck. Um, the axle housings are, they really are much smaller. Uh, and especially... I don't think we have any, I don't think I'm doing a news clip tonight, um, but I'm especially excited to get these 10-2 axles in here since it looks like Axial released some, was it overdrive or underdrive gears? Someone will know. I can't remember. I can't keep these things straight. I don't think we're going to end up reusing these crazy long screws. On the 10-2 axles, just because the shocks mount above the links. So I'm going to throw these in my parts bins. If you've never seen the parts bins that we use, these are some little jobs we get from Harbor Freight, if my camera will cooperate. And I highly recommend... Oh, I just dropped those. I highly recommend getting one of these basically for every truck that you've got and then getting one for your hardware and your tools, so on and so forth. Uh, if you look back through our videos on YouTube, if you're curious to see what we do with these guys, there is one that I think we called like the tools we take out to the trail, something like that. Spaghetti monster right here. Let's see, drive shaft hopefully will be okay. But if not, we'll figure it out. Upper link. Wow, I can't even get that on there. Just no no brain power tonight, so forgive me ahead of time. Or don't. You can just sit there and be angry. So there's really not anything reusable on here. Our um, tie rod somewhere. We've got replacement parts, tie rod, all that stuff. It's big and it's chunky. But this was so cool when it came. This was so scale when it came out compared to, you know, TLTs. At least it was kind of in the right direction. Who's still rocking some TLT axles? Give me a shout out. Okay, so axle is out. So that's good progress. Oh, loose screw. Don't know where you came from. Not everything is completely bolted in. Where did that come from? Well, we'll just sit it up there. So, <clears throat> as always, I'm not going to be following any instructions. It's more fun that way. <clears throat> Let's see. I need my... Well, I guess I do need to take the servo plate out. So, this is the Locked Up RC Pro CMS servo plate. Lots of holes, lots of options for different things. Uh, the reason that I, I really like this plate is because, hey, focus camera, uh, is because it, it allows you to, I can't even find where things are tonight. It allows you to move your track bar drop mount forwards or backwards. Uh, and because we have track bars that have hole locations more in or more out, you can run, you have some options basically. Options are always good, I find. Maybe I'm just crazy. I don't know. So, uh, let's see. This will fit in there when all is said and done. Hopefully we don't have to trim anything else that Eric has done, but we might. Let's see. It's tight. 
what am I I'm bumping up against something so there's a little battery tray he's got in here that I may have to just nip the corner off of so that's not a factory piece so those of you that are doing this with your old SCX 10 at home would not have to take this step and it's not a whole lot but I'm gonna do it God, I should have wore safety goggles. That little bit flew. Yeah, always wear safety goggles and um, gloves and, you know, a bubble. There we go. So the way that this works, so this is how the plate is going to wind up when all is said and done, right? But to get it in there first, basically what we're going to do is we're going to bolt it on like this on the outside, right? So instead of bolting it in here first, we're going to bolt it on on the outside with screws coming from the inside. That will enable us to use the holes for the track bar as, uh, I guess, alignment holes so that we can drill through the frame exactly where it needs to be. Paint to drill for some reason. Yes. It's just lots of drilling. As always, I have my terrible beat ass old drill. So you guys can wince in pain as it screams when I use it. All the fun stuff happens here. Let me see. So I need to find the kit does come with hardware. Uh, I didn't grab hardware because I actually still had some from doing this last time, wherever that tray, there we go. Got some trays. So this is the hardware, some drill guides <clears throat> and spacers that come with the kit. I don't remember exactly what I used uh, the last time I installed one of these. This is just some remnants. Same kit you put on the Gen 8 in December. Uh, this kit would not fit a Gen 8. In December, we were putting this on our SCX-10 II, I believe. And we continued, uh, that was with the VP axles. We continued that last two weeks ago, I guess. Uh, but we also put this kit on a different original SCX-10. It seems like we're doing a whole lot of these CMS kits, but honestly, they're just useful for putting different axles on because you get all these mounting options. So I think this will probably be, I say I think this will be the last one. Actually, I think there's one more that I have to do that's gonna have another set of axles that goes on it. Um, but we'll probably won't get to that until see March, maybe. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, okay, so I just need to get this bracket put in here. Uh, I'm actually gonna loosen. <clears throat> no, I'm gonna remove that whole shock hoop, just get it out of my way. So I don't accidentally smack it or break anything. Your mileage may vary, I guess I could say. Oh, that's probably what that screw is. That's what my other screw was. This random rogue screw probably was holding in the shot. Okay, that's fine. So we're going to bolt this up from the outside. I'm going to try to do a good job about putting my sockets back. It's probably not going to work. That's okay. <laughs> almost, almost bolted it to the wrong side. Oh, Patrick. Help me. Let's see. And of course, there's a lot of metal work on this truck for me to try to maneuver around. Oh, look at that. It goes right through. <laughs> I'm not doing this on camera. I need to. You guys need to yell at me, make me adjust the camera when I'm not doing stuff on camera. Maybe someone did yell at me. Looking forward to the Scale Hub giveaway. I don't know when the scale hub giveaway is. I don't know anything about that. What tools are those? Uh, those are, these are locked up RC tools. Uh, are you talking about the scale sockets? Um, every, everything that is up there in my little bin of tools, <clears throat> all of this stuff, these are all locked up RC tools that we sell on the site. None of them are special to me. I mean, they're all so special. But what I mean is, you can buy any of them. <coughs> um, No, it's not a scale hub giveaway tonight. It's, well, it sort of is. Well, you'll see. 
Ha! Ah. Any idea when the scale acorn hub bolts will be back in stock? Robert, are you talking about the 440 scale acorns? Um, if so, um, I don't know off the top of my head. I guess I, I shouldn't have asked because even if we were talking about some other ones, I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, I believe those are in the lineup. Uh, when are those due back? Let me think. Where are we? Where, what month are we in? We're in January. I'm telling you, it's allergy medicine. Probably going to forget to do all sorts of stuff tonight. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm still trying to think about when those acorns are supposed to be back. You know, we've got... So we have... Huh, it's funny that you asked that because... This is going to get into the question of the week later. Um, I don't know exactly when those are going to be back. We have some other scale acorns that you probably could use, though. Um, they are also 440. They're just a flange style. The nicer part about the other ones are that you get to use a thicker tool, the flange ones. <clears throat> um, actually, I may not even have. Let's see. Sorry, that's the wrong tool. You get to use uh, a two and a half millimeter tool. So you actually get a little bit more meat on the wall of the tool. Of course, this webcam is never going to focus on that. So I'm not even going to try tonight. I've learned my lesson. It's burned me so many times before not focusing. Punk ass webcam. Let's see. Okay. What happened? Oh, whew. let's see. So we've got that in. So now all we need to do, so you can see all of these holes are going to be options for where this bolts on so that you can move it to, like, what is that? One, two, three, four, four different spots. Am I counting right? <laughs> I should have taken NyQuil before the show. That way, at least I'd have an excuse. But this is all just like remnants of DayQuil or whatever, you know, HEB brand. I don't know. Let's see. Well, Jeremy, welcome for joining. Uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm I'm glad this is your first show. Or actually, no, I wish you had seen a different show because I feel like my brain is scrambled tonight, but that's okay. <clears throat> Just an idea. Uh, yeah, we, we are a little behind on restocking some of those hubs. Um, maybe we'll do a giveaway when we get them back. The front covers, I know a lot of people are waiting on those. Uh, Robert, let's see. Scale. Yes, those are the ones you're talking about. Um, I would guess february that's my guess i'm probably wrong i don't know any more unicorns dropping soon uh matthew probably <clears throat> not tonight but probably soon Ooh, let's see what else hey welcome ben thanks for joining so as i was saying the different mounting holes give you options so that you can move your track bar drop mount forwards backwards all that good stuff to drill it out we include in the guide in the guide we include in the kit a guide and the way the guide works is you drop it into the holes and it allows you to drill pilot holes without jacking up the threads in your beautiful servo mount plate so i'm going to punch through um probably just three of these tonight I think I've done more in the past, but, you know, I kind of want to get past this tonight. We've got so many things to do. Let's see. Hopefully, now, most of the time, you won't have a big, giant metal fender sitting in your way. And this isn't exactly in the way, but, man, it's close. And it's probably going to catch on it, but that's okay. Okay, one pilot hole through. <laughs> See, that wasn't such a chore now, was it? But it's just a pilot hole. Whew, pretty lucky I didn't bust the drill bit on that one. 
So we got one more to do. I, I could do more, but I know I'm not going to change the wheelbase on this truck because of the, the body that's on it. So <clears throat> I'm not going to have to move this track bar any further forward than it could possibly be right here. So I guess I'm being a little lazy. And that's okay. It happens to the best of us. Well, you guys can't really see the action. I mean, it's super action-y. Trying my best to keep my fingers out of the way because I know when that thing punches through, my fingers are right there. Really don't want to drill into my fingers tonight. It's not on my agenda. Actually, you know, there's not really ever been a night that I've thought to myself, I want to drill into my fingers tonight. So... Okay, three pilot holes, a little bit of dirt. Dirt in my workshop? No. Yes. Absolutely, yes. CMS is easy circuit points. And if you do it the right way, it will still perform fantastically. So how many people still have an original SCX-10? I'm just, I'm just curious. Or how many people still, yeah, I'll just start with that one question. Who still has an original SCX-10? I mean, there's nothing wrong with it if you guys don't. I'm just curious. Okay. So pilot holes, right? Good times. A little bit of dust. Again, I've got two drill bits. I'm going to guess that one of them is going to be garbage just because that's how my drill bits seem to, to be. I'm not nice to my drill bits at all. At least not, not workshop drill bits. Kid's deadbolt. There you go. Hey, we got a sharp drill bit. For once. Okay, maybe not for once, but you know. Oh, and you know what? I totally forgot. I think last time I had this problem where when I punched through, I had some big burrs on the back that I would like to avoid this time, but. We'll see how bad it is back there. Well, that, that chipped pretty well, so I may have actually cut things and not just jacked everything up. Just smacked something over there. Okay, forgot to bring my garbage, bring, wow. Forgot to bring my garbage can over here. It's gonna be a little bit of stuff in the back I'm gonna clean up. And I've done this before. It is super exciting. Um, where is my stabber? That's the technical term that I use for my X-Acto knife. Stabber, you know. Anyway. So all I'm really going to do is just remove some of this stuff. If I had, they make some really, they make some really nice tools and I've actually got one downstairs. I don't think it's, I don't remember what hole size it's for though. Um, they've got these really cool tools that will have like a, a little cutter. It's like a, man, what is that thing called? I don't know. I'm never going to think of it tonight. If I think of it, I'll add it to the description on YouTube. But it's uh, it's like this little cutter you can put in your drill. And when you punch through a hole, it'll like clean out the backside. It'll like deburr the backside of a hole. Um, and if I, if I really wanted to deburr this, I could take the chassis apart and, and get to it pretty easily. Um, or if I had a slightly larger drill bit up here, I could probably just hit this from the backside. But I don't because I forgot. 
Uh, a Dremel would also get in there and probably take most of this stuff off, but that's eh, not a big deal. Gives me something to do, you know. Plus, this is a good way for me to, you know, knock stuff up into my eyeball. And that's always, always good. I guess while I'm working on this, we could go to everybody's favorite thing, right? Everyone's everyone's favorite time of the week or everyone's favorite time of the show, I guess I should say. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. Dad joke of the week. What do you guys think? It was a routine trip at Disney World until the president was tackled by Secret Service agents today. Someone in the crowd yelled, Hey, Donald, duck! Yeah. I mean... <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm not even gonna... I could, but I'm not. I need to get like a, you know, did you ever watched like in the news when you were growing up back when people used to watch news on television that wasn't cable news and you'd have like your, your local news station and there was like the editorial guy and they'd say like, you know, this editorial does not necessarily reflect the thoughts and views of channel five or whatever. I need to put a disclaimer on the dad jokes. I don't know what the disclaimer is going to say, but. Somehow, I need to just distance myself from the dad jokes. So why do you keep doing them every week, Patrick? Because they're terrible. And that's someone has to. These things need to be out there. I need to make people groan. That's. Yep. That just happened. Okay, let's see. I think I got one more little piece I want to try to get out of here. And then we should be adequate and you know the truth is that once i bolt this plate in there this aluminum is probably just gonna just gonna take it do you know if the scx 10 2 kit will work on the ssd trail king chassis the rails are very similar uh i do not know cutter sink bit would do wonders on those burrs maybe that's yes I agree, Ben. Sorry, Robert. Back to your, your question. I was going to answer your question, and then I started reading another one at the same time. That's normal. Um, I don't know. I don't have one of those chassis here. I will tell you <clears throat> that our plate sits into the chassis rail. Um, I, don't, I don't know what the Trail King chassis looks like. So if it is like a C-channel chassis, maybe. Uh, if it's not, it might still work anyway. I don't know how the, you, you may have to get a different drop mount, or you may have to get like one for our SCX-10 and one for our SCX-10-2 and see which one is the closest in terms of where it actually drops your track bar. Uh, I don't know what the width is on the Trail King chassis. So, you know, since the uh, bracket wouldn't be sitting inside of a C-channel, if it's a flat rail chassis or whatever, um, you know, that steel, not aluminum. Yeah, no, but the this bracket is aluminum. That's what I'm talking about. So it's just, it's going to take it. Uh, the little burrs will dig nicely into my little aluminum bracket, I'm sure. And that's fine. Ha-ha. <clears throat> Ow. That hurt. <clears throat> so... We've got holes. My holes are, are not the prettiest. These are not the best holes I've ever drilled on one of these, but hopefully they will get the job done. Just want to check. And we might be okay, but <clears throat> my center hole looks, does not look like it's really lined up very well with my other two. So maybe I did something wrong. Now it could be that because I was bending the drill down, 
um, that my last hole just didn't line up the way that it should have. I'm just I'm just bolting this in to see if I can get screws in. And we might be okay. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I may I may have to come back with a slightly larger drill bit to um, attach things. What events do I plan on attending this year? Crawl Fest, Freedom Fest, Axel Fest, Pro Line by the Fire, Crawl Palooza. I'm sure there are many more. There are many more. There are lots of events that I want to go to this year. <clears throat> I don't know exactly what I'm going to make it to this year. Um, I was actually just talking with my wife about <clears throat> the Axial Fest in Attica. I think that's where it is. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, having ne I've never actually been to an Axial Fest. So the fact that they've got one on my sort of half of the country, I guess. Texas is central though, but whatever. Um, it's really making me consider going to that. We'll see. No promises. But we'll see. Yeah. Nationals. Uh, circus scale nationals are in Vegas this year. I I am not going to make it to Vegas this year. I have actually been to so I used to actually work in some enterprise asset management consulting uh, gigs. And I used to go to a big conference there every year. And I kind of just got burnt out on Vegas. Um, I did actually go to, uh, gosh, what, what, uh, US RCCA nationals in Vegas there one year. And it, it wasn't on the strip or anything like that. Um, so it was, it was different, but I don't know. I've been to Vegas so many times. Um, I kind of, I guess I'd prefer to, to go somewhere else. Badlands in Attica is correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Uh, okay. Where were we? we were doing some stuff. So this is going to be our drop mount. So let me see if I can get some screws in here. Actually, let's get our shock back on. Why not? Let's see if we can get a shock in there. And actually, you know what I'll do is I'm going to leave all of this a little loose so that if there's, if the screws are close to fitting, but they're not exact, hopefully the little bit of looseness will afford me some room for error and still have everything go together. Oh yeah, I'm actually not going to use that. I'm not going to use all three of the holes anyway. Just two. I didn't need to drill the far back one. I just couldn't remember. I can never remember things. I think she's poisoning me. No, I, I don't. Or do I? I don't know. I can't be expected to know things. Is this, did he have a, yeah, he's got one on that side. Okay, well this seems longer than it needs to be. So I'm actually going to swap that out for one of these guys. If I can find one that's the length that I want. That seems about right. I just keep putting tools back and then needing them. It's crazy. Okay, so that is in. So again, I'm going to leave some of these things loose. I don't want to use that screw there. I mean, I guess it's fine for now, but if I'm going to end up using a scale hex bolt, I may as well use a scale hex bolt. <clears throat> that is another thing I'm going to try to do with this truck is make use of lots of scale hardware. Because I can. Ow. That was much harder to get that screw out of there than it should have been. I didn't drop that. No. I don't know what you're talking about. Luckily, I've got like monkey feet and I can pick things up. Otherwise, this show, I'd have to like be hitting the technical difficulties thing all the time. Uh, that should be okay. So let's see, I think our holes will be close. I think we'll be close. So what length scale hex bolts do I want to put in there? I want them to be long, but not too long. So they need to be, let's see, actually I guess it's better to go too short than too long. 
So I don't want them to poke through the backside because then they would hit the servo that we don't have. Because I don't have a servo in here right now. But that's okay because I will eventually put one in there. I don't have my, my dial calipers over here or just any calipers. Let me see what one of these. That's perfect. I don't know what length they are though. They're over there. Aha. Let's see. For anyone else that's wondering, uh, these are eight millimeter. So eight millimeter scale hex bolt is good for this. Yeah, and they both go in. Good. So my holes were ugly, but good enough. Once you work in Vegas, it's never the same. Yeah, you mean like once you come out of a casino and you realize, oh my God, it's, it's I don't know, 8 a.m. and you have uh, a nine o'clock flight and your hotel's down the street. And yeah, I I have literally run through the, the Vegas airport full speed with a carry-on. I've done that. I admit it. It was fun. You know, like, this is awful. I hope this never happens again kind of way. So many stories from that place. Oh, God. Yep. Not the place to air them all, though. You know, that's definitely offline conversations that can happen. But, I mean, I, I say I, I didn't. I didn't really work in Vegas. I mean, I went to a trade show. I did work while I was there. Actually, I went to a couple of different trade shows, two different trade shows, but one of them I went, I don't, I don't know how many times. I always had a good time, but you know, there are probably, there are probably some places that, that I, I shouldn't go back to. And that's, that's one of them. Those leaving the live feed are gonna miss out on the giveaway. Well, they will miss out. That's okay. People can leave. That's all right. That's fine. <clears throat> Whew. Okay, so we've got this in. I don't have a servo to put in there. Um. <laughs> what? You guys let me do that. See, this is the problem with cold medicine. I just bolted it. I just put two screws in. <laughs> and that's that's where the track bar drop mount needs to go. Maybe it was off camera. I forget sometimes that I do things and I'm not always perfectly on camera like I'm supposed to be. But that's okay. This, those were test screws. That's, that's a thing, I suppose. Let me see. So if eight was perfect, this is how much thicker? So I want some 12s. Look for some 12s. I don't know if I have any 12s in here, but we'll see. We have something close. What's this? Aha. That's a 12. First grab. That's strangely lucky. That is not a 12. There we go. That looks like one also. Anyway. So. There we go. Get these in here. So I don't, I don't actually need the servo to, I guess I'm not doing a good job of letting you guys see what I'm doing. It's like a, that's a thing all the time. My hand just gets in the way. Ooh, that is, it is tight. So it may actually benefit um, you if you're doing this to, uh, if your holes come out imperfect, like mine were, uh, when you're putting this bracket on, uh, there's not a whole lot of room for error in my setup right now. Uh, so I it probably wouldn't hurt me to go back and kind of 
just take a little bit off the sides of those holes uh, just to give me a little bit of movement in there not super critical um, as obviously this is going to go together but probably would have been fat well no i don't know if it would have been faster i don't know what i'm saying you guys can't expect me to keep track of the things that i'm saying it's madness we're close Okay, I think that is, yep, so that is flush right there. Hopefully that's somewhat visible, even with the webcam focus crapshoot. Okay, so let's see, what have we done? We've removed that and we've got that in, so we're good. So you can see where this track bar mount is I guess it's uh well I was gonna try to show you where the hand brothers one would have been but I guess we already went over that so I'd just be repeating myself I mean, ain't nobody got time for that so let's see what's next I guess we can sort of start assembling this front axle um, let's see this already has a screw up there I'll save that one for the rear I guess you guys don't know what I'm talking about that's okay. I will put the cap back on that so I don't stab myself. Although, one of these days I'm just going to stab the crap out of myself on this show. And it'll probably be funny. I admit it. Some people will laugh. Where is... I'm looking for something I can get those little metal flex out of here with. Let's see. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep dragging all this crap... So, just pushing it against the back so I can vacuum it up later and it's out of the way. <coughs> Welcome, Jennifer. Let's see. Okay. Uh, how, was, how was your show? Let me see. So, I'm trying to remember the exact process for getting all these things together i think the shocks bolt on from the outside and then the links go in the center is that right somebody remind me i can't remember uh let me see but that that would probably be a good thing to know right <laughs> how does it go together i don't know let's see so links would be down here I don't know how all of this, so there's definitely some play in here, so we'll have to put a little spacer in there. Of course you guys can't see it. Uh, I don't I don't want you to see it's a secret. So there's some play in there. We'll have to throw a one, maybe two millimeter shim in there. Not a big deal. And then I need to find a screw for these shocks to bolt the shocks on. That looks like it's sufficiently long Let's see if i can find one for the other side that is similar length of course this screw looks like it might have some remnants of loctite on it so probably don't want to use that There we go. Okay, let's see where we are. Where are we on time? 50 minutes in, huh? Wow. That's, that's, yeah, that's good. Let me see. Um, hmm. Before I forget to do this, I'm just gonna do this now. Um, Cause I hate it when I forget things. Uh, let's see. We don't have any news items this week. We have, uh, I forgot to set up the coming soon stuff. We actually have some new stuff that we just launched. Let's see. Let me answer questions real quick. That's correct. Shocks on the outside. Thank you, Ben. Uh, yes, you can mount both. Lord, or, 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 or. That's, 
that's true. Uh, I'm probably just going to do the stock location since I'm trying to mimic stock for this. But uh, let's go ahead and do. So tonight's flash coupon is hot damn 15. If you go to our website and add some stuff to your cart and use this cart, uh, use this code, I should say, hot damn 15. It is not case sensitive. The first five people to use this code are going to get 15% off of anything in their cart that is locked up RC brand. I hope that makes sense. So go to, go to our, our site, put locked up RC, sorry, something in my eye, locked up RC branded stuff in your cart and use that code hot damn 15, you will get 15% off of the locked up RC items. Now, if you add in stuff from other vendors, the 15% off will not come off of their stuff, but it will come off of our stuff. So there we go. There's that. Now, now we're back to this. So this, that way you guys are already off shopping and buying stuff. It can allow me to concentrate on this and not worry about, you know, drastically messing things up. Uh, let's see. I probably could have, uh, filled the axles before I started putting things in, but I didn't. These things happen. Rear axle should be pretty easy. It's the front axle that I think is going to be, I'll say fun. Uh, let's see. I'm going to need one screw for our upper, which is on this side. Um, let me look for a shim. Actually, <clears throat> the Pro CMS kit does come with some shims. I forgot about that. I can't guarantee that they're going to be perfect for this application. That one's a little thick. Let me get something else. <coughs> Ow. Dying. Yeah, I, I meant to do a, well, not a coming soon segment this week. Um, I've kind of been a little discombobulated today. I meant to do a uh, new thing this week. You guys go check out the new releases on the site. Uh, we added a whole bunch of hardware on there. Uh, we'll be adding more this week. I hope that you all find that stuff useful. Let's see. Who wouldn't find hardware useful? I don't know. Someone. So let's see, this is threaded and I need one that is a little bit long. How long is this? It's not, it's not scale hardware that we added to the site. I guess I should mention that. It's good old hardware. Uh, trying to carry a, a little bit more stuff. Um, a lot of times when we build kits, you know, like our CMS kit, <clears throat> it needs hardware. And so I figured, you know what? Probably makes sense to carry a little bit more hardware. I guess you guys couldn't see that, what I just did. I just, I just bolted the shocks to the axle. So we've got some connection here. I'm going to get this upper in, but I think I need a spacer. And I just grabbed a spacer and put it down. I almost lost it. <clears throat> I have no idea if these links are going to be even close to what I need in terms of length. But we're going to find out shortly. And as crazy as it may seem, that may actually take up all of our time for the night because I am I am trying to keep these shows to about an hour mostly just so that my voice does not get completely destroyed I dropped the spacer oh no there it is <clears throat> especially tonight trying to keep it short so that my throat does not just catch on fire. Come 
Come on. Get in there. There you go. It's close. Just trying to get it to line up. I think we're good. So the plastic will conform somewhat when I tighten this down. So that should alleviate, you know, whatever slop was left. I did want to use a spacer though, because I, I just, I don't like putting that much stress on plastic if I don't have to. If I'd thought about it, I probably could have drilled this out because this screw should be long enough to get into the center bit. Yeah. Uh, and that would probably help it conform. There we go. Okay, so nice and tight. Good work, team. <clears throat> so this will be a little bit more fun because, and by fun, I mean it's not going to be as much fun uh, because the that screw actually looks like it's too long. I may have to change that one. <coughs> but for now, I'll just back it out of here. <clears throat> um, these are aluminum mounts on the axle housing. So they are not going to conform as I tighten things down, and that's okay. Let me see. Comments, what do we got? Is the axle upside down? Well, no. Uh, <clears throat> the whole truck is upside down. Um, this is our, our upper link mount. <clears throat> so it, it may have just looked that way because of camera. I, I don't know. Uh, but no, it's, it's not. Um, these link mounts also have, uh, they are the, it looks like the axial offset link mounts. I don't know if that's also causing it to kind of play with your eyes. Uh, I am definitely going to need a longer upper link. Yeah, significantly longer. <clears throat> so we will see. I'm not going to bother trying to get a spacer in this right now because I know that some stuff's going to have to change already. So I'm just going to kind of throw this in there, make it tight, but I will show you guys the profile. And this probably actually will be a decent enough spot um, for now. If my screw will go in. Is that going in or am I crazy? Well, I know I'm crazy, but I still want to know if the screw's going in. Yes, there we go. Okay. That's weird. <clears throat> so, as you can see, <laughs> now, you know, it's not like this was a stock link because this had a Hand Brothers kit on it before, but our upper link is absolutely going to have to be longer because right now our pinion is pointing straight down. That's, that's no good. So, I will take some measurements and we will have to put a longer upper length. The lower lengths I think will actually be okay. Where did I put that axle housing? Um, I may lengthen them a little bit. Just trying to compare center line to center line. Yeah, I'll probably end up lowering, lowering, lengthening the lowers. Blah. Definitely gonna need a longer upper length though. I don't think I have anything to play with over here, but I know we've got a whole lot of different length links. Yeah, I said that right. Okay, good times. Well, <clears throat> it's a start. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Didn't need to install this tonight. Throw that in the box. Uh, let's see, actually, no, that's the wrong box. I need the Unimog box, which is down there. So, that brings me to The question of the week. This week's question is, which acorns do I need for my wheels? 
So I, I got this question sort of earlier uh, from someone because they had purchased, I don't want to say the wrong acorns, um, but they purchased some that just weren't going to work with their wheels. So if you go to our site and you're looking for acorns, and let's say you've got some SLW wheels. Um, now I'm going to start with SLW because <clears throat> that's probably the most common thing that people are buying acorns for on our site, right? So they use 440 hardware, so I'm just going to punch in 440. You'll see a couple of different things pop up. All the acorn wheel studs are actually the first things that pop up. So our original acorn wheel studs are these bad boys right here. Uh, when we first started making these acorns, we made them to fit wheels like these VP wheels and our SLW wheels. Uh, and remember, SLW is, it just means super lightweight, but it has come to mean this hub pattern in the industry. So lots of people selling wheels that they say are SLW compatible. All they mean is it fits with an SLW hub. So... <clears throat> For a wheel like this, that has what I'll call like an open face like this, you are going to be able to use these acorn wheel studs. These things have a three millimeter hex. So they take this three millimeter socket tip. If your wheels have a recessed uh, area for the acorns, I guess is what I'll say, right? So like our Hellcat wheel here. So these acorns are actually recessed down in there. There are a lot of VP wheels and other manufacturer wheels that the, the hardware is recessed like this, right? So if you've got something that's recessed, you want these flange style acorn wheel studs. The reason you want the flange style is because they are only two and a half millimeters across the flats. And all that means is you get to use a two and a half millimeter socket. From far away, they look super similar, but the two and a half millimeter socket means that you get more meat on your tool, right? Because the same thickness tool that will fit down in this recess, if you try to make a three millimeter socket fit down in here, they just get really narrow. And honestly, we made those tools for a while. We made three millimeter sockets that would fit down into this recess. And so many people had problems with them. Whew. Sorry, that's a lot of talking. <clears throat> so many people had problems with them that we stopped making them and we started making these flange acorns because the things that people were doing to tools, it's crazy. Breaking them. <clears throat> How much torque people were using, I don't know. Um, I think sometimes people forget that, hey, these are little teeny tiny screws and you kind of want to be gentle. Anyway, so <clears throat> those are the two different styles of acorns that I'm going to suggest, right? So the flange style and this regular style, if you've got an SLW wheel. Now, another thing that you can look into, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use this to cheat because I think it's listed down here. If you are running beef patties or a scale rotor, you're going to want something that's a little bit longer, right? So these guys down here, they're the same thing as these. They're just a little bit longer. We don't have the longer flange style yet, but the next time that we make some flange style, we're going to make some that are longer and we're going to make them in different colors. Uh, I know a lot of you have requested acorns in different colors. Those are coming. I promise. So, um, at least you've requested them for 440. We already have some of the two millimeter hardware. Uh, so let's see, let's do Acorn. So this will pull up all of our options. If you're running one of our 8L wheels, so if you're in whatever wheels and you're running an 8L wheel, so that's got the milled hex in the back, I suggest these M2 Acorn wheel studs. Um, the same thing kind of applies with these that applies with our 440 stuff. If you've got a wheel that has a recess and it needs a two millimeter acorn, run the mag style. 
We don't call these flange because these aren't a flange. They actually have a captured washer in there, right? So you've got two options with these as well. These also come in black. Uh, these are what we recommend for our A08 wheels. Uh, the wheels were designed specifically for these. And the nice thing about using these is that the two millimeter socket that fits on these acorns is the same size as the hardware that you use in the beadlock ring. So it's just one less thing to buy. Um, I hope that helps some of you figure out which acorns you need to buy. That's it. Um, we definitely will get back into more of this Unimog because I, heck, I want to finish the axles. Uh, it'll probably go a whole lot faster next time. We should be able to probably get the rear axle in completely and fix this, this pinion angle. And I'm wearing a dark shirt, so it's it's hard to see what's going on there. But you can use my, my nice pale white arm as a background. Yeah, can you guys see? Pinion angle, not so bueno. Um, but we will get that taken care of next time. Longer upper link. We will get the axles loaded and we'll get this rear guy in. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop us a note on the website. Uh, other than that, thanks for stopping by. Again, my name is Patrick Norton and I am your host. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, if there's anything else you need, just let us know. Thanks.